Hi guys, welcome to Manview, the product review site strictly for man stuff. Sorry ladies, no nail polish reviews here. My name is Gary, I will be your host. Let's take a look at the latest product. Hi guys, let's take a look at the dilemma that I had. This is a shot up the side of my house. As you can see in the back there is a greenhouse. We're going to be putting another one there. I'll have my planting workbench on the left. But more importantly, we're going to be adding some above ground flower and um, vegetable planting beds in that green area where the grass is. So between the red stockade fence on the left and the house with the ladder on the right, I need to close off that entire area. And the reason I needed to do that was basically because of these guys. These are my dogs. I have four of them. Two guys on the left. They're actually the same two guys on the right side, <laughs> except the brown and white guy is a lot bigger now. Um, but they're about 80, 90 pounds. The guy in the far back, the black and white one, is about 130 pounds. And the little guy up front here is Riley. He's about 30, maybe 40 pounds, somewhere in that area. Now, they're not highly active dogs. They're not super aggressive. They don't really um, jump on fences and push them over. So they're pretty easy to um, control. So this brings me back to here to the side of the house. Now, I needed to have all this blocked off so these dogs not only go in there and start digging around in the planting uh, beds but also so they're not going to the bathroom and it's just easier to maintain the other issue i had is i also need to keep this area completely open so having a little gate was going to be a little bit of a concern for me because i need to get a lawnmower in there i need to get some heavy equipment in and out of there so i kind of wanted to be able to have a fence that i can easily move in and out of the way and also open um, this whole area up so this is what I came up with. I had to get a little um, uh, creative looking through all the choices and options that we have on Amazon, Home Depot, Lowe's, and, and that kind of thing. So the opening between the fence and the house is 104 inches wide. The fence itself is 92 inches wide, which left me a gap right here of 12 inches. What do I do with that? Well, I'm going to show you what I do with that in a few minutes, which is pretty easy for me to close off. So on the right side again, over here, this is the entire width. So what I did do is I dropped in this slat board. Now this green marker I got here was just a slat board. I painted it the same color as the fence. And I did that just to uh, adhere that to the stockade fence support beams behind it. So when I put the zippity fence to it, I had something a little bit more concrete for the zippity fence to hold onto. That's the only reason I did that. It may not be an option that you need, but I certainly wanted to add in a little strength so I didn't have to put the zippity fence, hook it directly up to a stockade um, fence because we know the planks on a stockade fence can kind of rot and deteriorate over time and it would just rip apart. So I wanted to put something that was just a little bit more sturdier. Okay, so this is what I had in mind originally. I said, let me get a gate. Let me get a couple of fence pieces and make it all look nice. So I, I did a ton of research on Amazon and Lowe's and, and, and Home Depot. And the gates themselves are extremely expensive. They can run 140 bucks to the average seem to be about $200, um, maybe even a little bit more depending on the size and the style and stuff that you get. Um, so, you know, when I looked at this, I said, this is $300 just for the gate. Okay, not even the post, you know, it comes with the post covers, but not the posts themselves. So you got to get posts, you got to get you got to get the concrete, you know, so it kind of keeps adding up. So I said, this is not a good idea. So when I found Zippity, I just studied the fence for a second and said, wait a second, that almost covers the whole length of what I need to do. So on the right side here, this whole thing was done for about $122. So on the right side here is that plank I told you I put there. And just to, again, paint it the same color, just to give it a little bit more of a sturdy, um, grip for the zippity fence to hold on to. Okay. And that the zippity fence also comes with metal uh, base feet that just slide in and snap in wedge in real well. So it kind of keeps the fence off the lawn, you know, so it doesn't ruin the lawn in that area or so. So I, I love that effect. So let's go back again to what I thought I needed, how much that came out to, and where I'm at. So again, I needed a gate. And that this happens to be the lowest price I could find, $137 for a gate. Not specifically this model you're seeing, but something similar or close to that. Then I needed, obviously, a fence to attach to it, and they're about $97. I also needed another fence, but I would have to cut that in half because I can't use a whole one 
which would have left this end kind of raw and cut. And what would I use to adhere that to the fence or the house? And then it would cost another $97 because I have to buy a whole nother fence. So this really came to an easy $300, if not more. Okay. Again, here's what I did. And everything you see here is included in that $122 price that I did this all for. So the Zippity fence itself was $85. I had to then add a fence post, which was 14 bucks. Um, and then this is how I solved that 12 inch gap. I went to Home Depot and bought those little roared iron um, garden fences. And just with my foot staked it right in between there and it's locked in nice and solid. Again, my dogs aren't aggressive and they're not jumping up on things. So I don't, they see a fence and they walk away. Okay, so they're not really gonna be pushing against that. It's really just to hold them um, from walking up into that area. The post cap was three bucks. Again, Home Depot found it cheaper there than they did on Amazon. Again, the U-bolts cheaper in Home Depot than I found in Amazon, as well as the screw eye hooks, which I'm gonna show you in a video on how I put those all together. The nice thing about this was that it added a little handle right here. And then all I really do is just kind of pick up the handle and the fence about two inches and I can swing the entire fence all the way back against the stockade fence either to the left or the right and I can mow the area in and out of there as well as move larger equipment in and out. So the whole fence itself really became a gate all by itself. So it's a fence and a gate all in one. Okay. Again, the whole thing was done for about 122 bucks minus that flower and the flower pot and the and the bracket that holds it. Okay, so these are the this is the U-bolt that I used. Um, I used four of them on the hinge side, which is the red fence side, and on the latch side, which is on the white post side, as well as four eye hooks. Okay, guys, so this is what it looks like um, completely done. A little bit of live view. Just want to show you um, in the video what the brackets used i had to be a little innovative about it and how i used it so let me just show you what it looks like so this is the this is the u-bolt that i used and of course that's the eye hook going into the post so the u-hook i just got at um home depot i actually found them on amazon and they were a lot more expensive on amazon believe it or not than they were at home depot i think they were like five dollars on amazon they're like a i don't know it's like a buck 85 or something home depot so what I did, there was already holes in the fence. I didn't have to put anything in here because they have pre-drill holes to use um, another U-shaped hook that came with the fence. In case you wanted to put two fences together, you just drop something like that in there and it would drop right into the other fence. I didn't have to put any holes in the fence at all. I just used um, a washer and a nut just to keep this nice and tight. And I did the same for the bottom. See we get a shot with you in here. We go on the bottom. Just a nut and a washer. Kind of locks this guy in place. And I did the same for the bottom as well. Okay. And then I ended this handle right here just so I can lift this up, like maybe, I don't know, two inches or so. Just unhook it and then swing it. So what I did was on this side is where I did the same thing, but the, the U bolt was a little bit different. It comes with that little plate bracket. They come with it with the two nuts. I just put it on an eye hook, right going into that, that board, that slot board I put up there, just so it had something nice to attach to as opposed to putting it onto a, you know, a stockade picket fence. These things break apart, they're too thin and easy. So I just put a board, much stronger deck board on here, and I just bolted it straight to the fence post, which is behind here, so it gave it a lot more structure. I put this on rather loose so that it can swing both sides. Okay, so I can swing it one way or the other. So what I do is I just lift the fence just about two inches or so, straight out of its bracket, and I just swing it open. So let me back up so you can see that. So now I can swing, have this whole opening here. I could swing this to that side of the fence. I could swing it over to this side of the fence, and it leaves the whole pathway open, so it's much easier to cut the lawn back and forth instead of like a little gate in the middle here where you have to push a lawnmower through it. So now we just pick this back up, about two inches, I slide it over, 
until I line it up and drop it straight down. Same thing with the bottom. Okay, so it swings and locks in. I did put the post in, about a $14 post. I uh, concreted it into the ground for the $5 excuse me, not $5, it was a $3 cap for the post, just to decorate it a little bit. And here's that 12-inch um, little garden fence that had that gap. I just put it in there and the stakes right to the ground with your foot, you pushed it in. Now again, I have dogs. They're fairly large. They're actually not aggressive. They're kind of dopey, slow dogs. <laughs> so they just kind of walk up to the fence and realize I can't get in. So they just turn and go the other way. If you have dogs that jump, or they're aggressive, you know, and they're going to jump up on the fence, or they're going to push the fence, this will not hold. It's just way too um, light, and it'll break. Uh, if somebody pushes it with their hands, um, you know, and really forces it, it's very, very light. I think the whole thing probably weighs 8 pounds, 10 pounds, that whole fence. Uh, it's just meant to guide things away from the area. I'm going to wind up also putting another one on this side of the house to stop my dogs from going up this side. Okay, so I'm gonna put another fence together and I'm gonna put one here as well. So, thanks for watching. As always, remember, subscribe to the channel, click on it, click on the little bell notification so every time that we put a new video out, you'll get alerted about it. Um, if you have any comments and feedback, I'd love to hear from you. Drop your comments below if you have any questions about the product. By all means, put it in the comments below and I'll be glad to answer them for you. As always, I will put a link to the product so you can click on it, go to it, read other reviews about it, or purchase it if you happen to like it. Until next time, guys, watch Man View over and over and over again like binge TV.